been 23 years since the Reds swept the A's out of the World Series in 1990. But one incident that still stands out is the sight of a young man from San Bernardino snapping a bat on himself. Not out of anger, but it's just part of a swing. And Glenn, <laughs> after all these years, I still find it baffling. It's one of those anomalies that I just cannot explain. But tell us, uh, you know, how you did this. I mean, because it's still... I just can't, I just, it doesn't, doesn't register with me how you snap a bat on yourself <laughs> taking a swing. You know, it's pretty amazing. There's two things people remember about my career mostly when I, uh, when I go back to Cincinnati or when I run into fans on the street. Um, the very first thing they always say, oh, I remember that time when you broke that bat in the World Series. That's one of them. And then obviously the catch is the other. Um, but I was, uh, I had just gotten that uh, video from uh, MLB media and I posted it on my page and got a lot of comments. Um, it was it was one of those situations where and I had done that many times in the past. I mean, I did it when I was with Milwaukee a few times and I did it with the Reds, but it was just the, that was national coverage in the World Series game four against Dave Stewart. Um, and he had just thrown me a, a fastball that I uh, took for a strike. And um, and I was all geared up and ready to swing, and he throws me another one that I'm I still to this day I have having nightmares that I missed that pitch, <laughs> but um, but I swung right through it, and just as all the other times when I broke the bat, as soon as I got to the to my follow through, and I'm starting to bring the bat back, is that action is what usually breaks the bat for some reason, and uh, it's just the force of uh, me swinging and having the bat going through the follow through. And just as I'm beginning to bring it back is when I usually hear that crack and then the snap. And, and that was a pretty clean break on that one. And, um, you know, it, I typically, you know, uh, many times amazed myself when it happened because it didn't happen every time. I always swung the bat the same way every single time. But when it would happen, it would be kind of a little bit of surprising to me because I wouldn't be expecting it. But because I had done it so many times, I had, you know, okay, I know what to expect here. Boom, the back snap. So just a really forceful swing. Um, I was pretty charged up at being in the World Series game four and um, wanting to do something, uh, do something big and got a good pitch to hit, just missed it, and uh, the bat snapped. And Game of inches, just, huh? Game of yeah, inches. Yeah, it was. You know, the most to me, the thing that, that's really interesting about that whole sequence is just right before I broke the bat, you know, the two announcers, I think it was Jack Buck and Tim McCarver, were talking about, oh, this guy is so big and strong. And um, and then the very next pitch is when I swing and snap the bat in half. And then th that whole commentary afterward is, was pretty, uh, was pretty uh, funny. Classic. It's classic. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Well, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, uh, life after baseball for Glenn Braggs. What has Glenn Braggs been doing? I know I saw you on television. I do. You did a little bit of acting. Uh, yes. And, and uh, yes. what was that show? Refresh my memories about the uh, super agent. Uh, about the, uh, it agent. was Arliss. It was called Arliss. Arliss. Very yeah. funny show, by yeah. the way. But yes, I saw you there and, uh, and you did an episode there. Tell us a little bit about what Glenn Braggs did after you retired. Well, I, you know, that was one of the things that I did when I got done playing. I actually obviously wanted to continue to play. Um, I was over in Japan playing and, um, you know, I had injured my knee. Uh, I got, um, uh, when I came back from Japan, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. I actually uh, hooked up with another agent when I got back here to America to try to continue playing over here. Um, and my options were pretty limited at that point. And, um, you know, my wife is in the business. She's an entertainer. And uh, she had connected me with her, uh, her theatrical agent. And I thought, OK, this might be something nice for me to do for a little while, just to try to get my feet wet and, you know, transition to, you know, out of baseball and into something else. And so I thought, OK, that would be nice for me to do. So I did a little bit of acting. I actually booked a bunch of commercials uh, those first couple of years. And um, and then I um, just uh, on a whim, um, my theatrical agent got that audition for me for the R list. And I actually wasn't even expecting anything. I go in there, and uh, I'm trying to think of the act. The, the actor's name was Robert Wool. Yeah, Robert Wool, very funny guy. Yeah. And uh, as soon as I walk into the audition room, the very first thing he says to me is, hey, you're Glenn Braggs. I had you on my fantasy team. <laughs> so 
<laughs> I was like, okay. I was like, well, how did I do? You know, oh, you he said I did pretty in. good. For, yeah, he said I did pretty good for him. So I auditioned. Didn't think the audition went that well, and uh, ended up getting the part. And it was one of the funnest things I've ever done. And so I did a little bit of acting. Um, I think I, I uh, after that, I transitioned into uh, doing some real estate. I still have my real estate license. I'm not really doing that much with it right now, but uh, transitioned to real estate. And con right now, I've been uh, doing some hitting instruction here in Santa Clarita mm -hmm. and um, been working with some kids and uh, you know, starting to find my passion for the game again and get back into baseball. So, um, so I've been doing a lot of the, doing that. I've been doing a lot of clinics. I do a lot of charity work. I went to the Dominican Republic and uh, worked with some kids there. Um, so it's just been a lot of that, uh, either uh, some acting, a little bit of real estate, um, pretty much a little bit of everything. And you know, my number one job right now is just being a dad. Um, I have four children. Uh, one in college and two in high school. Holy cow! And uh, one in flies, elementary huh? right now. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's a it's a pretty busy life, but it's great. I'm a blessed. Uh, I feel blessed uh, to be able to do what I can do on a daily basis. And um, so yeah, that's what I've pretty much been doing pretty let's much for the last uh, so 15 or so years. Yes. Glenn, let's go back in time a little bit. Tell us about your your beginnings, San Bernardino High School. Uh, mm -hmm. A good friend that uh, has since departed, uh, Chuck Lewis, used to tell us that yes. I believe he got you a pair of cleats or one of the first baseball cleats or a glove. Could you That's right. expand on that? Yeah, I'll tell you, you know, I met Chuck Lewis in, um, I think it was uh, the, the Pony League that mm -hmm. we were playing in during the, uh, when I was younger. And, and, and it's, I, I'm going to try to make this story short, but I didn't play a lot of baseball um, growing up. That's so right. I you played, were not a baseball player. Yeah. Yeah, I played a little bit of uh, Pony League and some Colt. Uh, and, and interesting story, you know, it, Chuck did a lot for me back then because he bought cleats and gloves for me um, um, and was just really instrumental in getting me into baseball. And, and that's a, probably a story uh, um, that a lot of people don't know because I actually didn't play baseball until my senior year. And that's how correct. I got to play was uh, Ron Shrimp, who was our baseball coach, Mm -hmm. uh, needed a center fielder, and I was working at the time, and I just didn't have time. I wasn't planning on playing baseball, and uh, he he asked me if I wanted to come out and play, and I told him that you know if they could work my schedule around uh, the baseball schedule around my work schedule, and uh, he said, well, they'd work on it. And Chuck Lewis was the one that that made that thing happen. He actually knew my boss. Uh, I was just working at a fast food restaurant at the time, but he knew my boss and got my boss to work my work schedule around the baseball schedule, and that's how I got to play Isn't my senior amazing? year. Isn't that yeah. amazing? Buddy? Yeah, he was an amazing guy. That guy just did for everybody. A dear friend and, and a real legend indeed. Yeah. Glenn, tell us one thing I want, I want you to uh, talk to us about is, is life after uh, sports, after the lights have been turned off. A lot of athletes, unfortunately, haven't been as successful as you've been, and they have a hard time adjusting to the everyday life uh, after the accolades and, the, and, like they say, the noise has died down. What mm -hmm. are things that you would recommend, you know, to some of the uh, professional athletes or when you talk to people, what you should do or after you're done with your, with your professional career? What are some of the things that would help people out? I think it, the thing that's helped me out a lot was that I immediately found something else that I could be passionate about. And, and I was very passionate about baseball when I played. Uh, one of the things that allowed me or helped me to get past that point of uh, the, you know, I, I would say, you know, people ask me when I got done with baseball, do I miss it? And for about the first two years, I would say, nah, I don't miss it. But I was just being in denial. Uh, I definitely did miss it. It took me about two years to admit that I was missing it. And then about another two years of, of a process of getting past that point, of, uh, of being able to have closure on it. Mm -hmm. But I immediately was able to find something I can get involved in, which I got into acting. Um, and then I was, I was married at the time and we had uh, children. So that was something that I could really, uh, you know, dig my heels into, uh, become involved in. I'm a very involved dad in everything, all of their activities. And, um, and so I would say the biggest thing is, is, is to, to not let your passion for the game uh, go quiet 
um, and take that passion that you have for the game and find whatever it is that you can be passionate about and make that your passion for the future. Well, Glenn, I tell you, you're a true San Bernardino legend, and uh, you're one of the first when we when we did Sports Beat back in 19. Mm -hmm. um, wow, this is a long time ago, 1990. Yes, it was. Right after you won the World Series, you were very That's gracious right. enough to uh, be one of my first guests. I want to say you were my first guest, and uh, his, here we are, 23 years later. And I always wanted to ask you, if you didn't play baseball, what sport do you think you would you would have uh, succeeded at? You know, it's interesting. I was actually, I didn't play a lot of sports growing up. And I played a little bit of football, played a little bit of baseball. But I was trying to get a football scholarship. So I went out for the well, football Well, you had the size. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was going to get, get a football scholarship. And um, uh, I, I went out for the football team, made the team I, just my senior year, and got hurt in the second game. So that went out the window. And so, and I wasn't even intending on playing baseball so um so it was it was interesting story how it came about but um i was just intending on going on to uh to valley college and then i was going to try to transfer to a four-year from there and and uh but my life took a different turn uh because i had good people in my life who directed me and were looking out for me um and uh and and the rest is history and i just i you know and i never forget that i always try to give back that's why i do the charity stuff and that's why when i do some training sessions i do scholarships for some kids because I, it was a lot of those things were given to me. I didn't have to pay for those cleats. I didn't have to pay for that glove. And I try to give that back. And I never forgot. It was something that was instilled in me at a young age. Um, and I never forgot that. Well, Glenn, I always will regret the opportunity of seeing you in SBBC blue and white here. But I'm very happy <laughs> for the uh, way your life turned out. And uh, tell you, it's been way too long between uh, appearances here. I hope we see you down here in San Bernardino sometime. And uh, come on by and say hi. You are... Uh, you're really a, you're a special, special athlete, and uh, much success to you, and uh, stay in touch, and thank you for being with me once again, 23 years later here at KVCR Studios. I appreciate that. It's been great, and I'd love to come down and, and, uh, and meet with you and because uh, it definitely has been way too long. Thank you, Glenn. I really appreciate it. Thanks again, Glenn, for joining us here on Streaming with Sola. Till the next time, see you at the game.